For many, the Pro Max iPhone represents not just the best iPhone, but the best smartphone on the market. While I might dispute that, you might be wondering how Honor's latest flagship phone compares, and you may be surprised to discover it actually holds up really well against the most expensive iPhone. I'm Cam Bunsen, and in this video I'm comparing the Honor Magic 6 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So strap yourselves in, let's get started. As boring as smartphone design has become in recent years, it's great when companies find different ways to go about the same thing. Look at these two phones from any angle, and it's impossible to confuse them. Honor, from a hardware perspective at least, has opted not to go for that flat edge, flat surface design like the iPhone. Where iPhone has completely flat edges and sides, Honor has gone with curves even adding very subtle curves to the corners and the top and the bottom edges of the display. This benefits the experience of using it in a few ways, making what is a large phone feel a bit more comfortable and more compact. It also aids in some swiping gestures on the screen when swiping to go home or to the recent app screen. It feels fluid like its design is helping you along that motion. It does make the phone feel a little slippery though, so my grip didn't feel quite as secure. Now, I was testing the glass-backed version, and I suspect that isn't the case on the model with a plastic-based leather on the back. Still, I find the flat design of the iPhone easier to type on with two hands, if only because I sometimes found the touch response on the Honor a little bit laggy, sometimes missing spaces when tapped near the bottom of the display. The only real similarity between them in the looks department is that pill-shaped cutout near the top of the display that plays home to the front-facing camera and sensors for facial recognition. Now you'll see very different approaches to design on the back too, with iPhone having that understated and minimal camera island in the top corner that seamlessly ramps up from the surface glass on the rear. Honor's large jewel-shaped island is eye-catching, and there's a pleasing symmetry to its position which not only looks good, but means that it doesn't rock or wobble when it's placed on its back. Both weigh about the same though, and neither is particularly light, but both are pretty sturdy and are covered in a durable scratch-resistant glass. I've not managed to mark, dent or scratch either display yet. And they're both water and dust resistant to the same high rating, so if you get caught in the rain or drop the phone in water, they should be fine. So displays, and here's an interesting comparison, if only because Honor boasts about having 5000 nits peak brightness, which of course means that when you're watching HDR content and you get small little bright spots in the video, those can reach 5000 nits. However, when it comes to the brightness of the entire panel, generally speaking, with the brightness cranked up to the max, there's not a massive difference when you're looking at the iPhone versus the Honor. Honors does seem slightly brighter, but also seems to push the contrast up a little as well, which gives the slightest bit more of that artificial sharpness to videos and photos compared to the iPhone. But there's not really much in this. Apple's does have this tendency to be slightly warmer than the Honor, which can make anything in that red color spectrum look a bit too red and warm. My skin, for example, goes more rosy on the iPhone. But if you ask me to pick one phone purely on the display, I don't think I could pick between them. They're both fantastic really, reaching high brightnesses and smooth refresh rates, delivering a great expansive experience whether you're gaming, watching movies or TV shows. Now what's interesting from a software standpoint is how Honor has taken inspiration from iOS. Its lock screen customization looks very much identical, and it has that standby lock screen that activates automatically when the phone is in landscape mode. Android and iOS are very different systems, and Honor's version of software leans heavily into AI. It's got a few different AI features like automatic video creation from gallery photos, and a few more features that it's working on and will bring in a software update in the very near future. Now, in previous years, software support has been a weak point of Android. Where iPhones were supported for five to six years with major updates, Android until recently were lucky if you've got three. Now, that's no longer the case. Honor promises four major updates and five years of patches. Apple doesn't make such promises, but with iOS 17, it supports phones from six years ago and generally speaking, does keep major updates rolling out for about that length of time to most models. I don't imagine that changing with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, in every way that really matters for most people buying one of these two phones, the performance is pretty much inseparable. We're really splitting hairs when it comes to comparing the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the iPhone's A17 chipset because they're used to power two very different operating systems. The end result for both is fast, consistent performance across a number of challenging game titles and apps. Battery life isn't always easy to compare between iPhone and Android, but in terms of real everyday usage, I found them to be very similar here as well. At least in terms of what level battery I'd have left after the end of a long day, and how long a full charge would last me. I'd get near enough two days on 100% battery whether I was using the Honor or the iPhone, which is to say they're both very, very good. 
If there's a winner in battery life, I suggest I could get a little more screen time and active use from the iPhone. But there's really not that much in it, and with my own typical 2-3 to three hours of usage per day, it was the difference between 5 or 10% over the two days, which isn't very much. Now there's no competition when refilling the battery after emptying it. Honor's 80 watt wired and 60 watt wireless charging can refill the battery completely in as little as 40 minutes iPhone takes half an hour just to do half the battery. Now, of course, neither comes with a charger in the box, and to get Honor's maximum speed, you do need a compatible 80 watt charger. Similarly, Apple's iPhone has MagSafe charging, which is wireless with magnets to hold it in place. It's super convenient, but again, you need a compatible charging stand or base, and they're not cheap. Now, I think what surprised me about the cameras was how Honor and iPhone's processing was similar in some regards. And what I mean by that is the way they both neutralize highlights and images and add a warm tone to photos means there are definitely some similarities. And because both have the primary ultrawide and dedicated zoom lenses, you get similar versatility in focal lengths, but that's about where the similarities end. Honor does something quite different with shadows, or areas of lower light in photos. They get lifted, which isn't always a bad thing, but sometimes it can be a little bit too much, because especially with the ultra-wide camera, I found these areas of lower light end up getting painted in with a smooth texture that looks completely unnatural, combined with the oversaturated colours, giving images quite an artificial look. That same effect can be seen when looking at photos taken with the dedicated zoom camera. It's not as obvious at two and a half times, but at five times zoom, if you look closely at details, you'll notice this unusual, unnatural smoothing of textures, whether it be in trees and branches or just the rough surface and lines on bricks and walls. iPhone does the opposite with shadows and dark spots, often leaving them really dark and crushed, so you can't see much detail there at all. In fact, in a picture with lots of shadows and dark spots, the overall effect can be quite dim. Colours are more realistic though, so on the whole, in the daytime, it's the photos from the iPhone that I prefer. Despite sometimes having the tendency to over darken shadows and slightly over sharpen details, it has the best overall look. If Honor could tone down its over processing and over smoothing, it would be a great system, especially with that primary camera. It's capable of drawing in a lot of light and gives images great detail and depth. Switching to night mode, you see similar differences between the two phones, especially again looking at the zoom and the ultra-wide cameras. The primary camera is stronger though on the Honor, and seems to cope better with low light situations than the iPhone, at least in terms of sharpness and light capture. Honors will even capture stars in the sky that are visible in the photos. But again, with the zoom and the ultra-wide, you'll see more of that smoothing effect that looks really weird. As for video, there's nothing quite like iPhone for capturing great looking videos. Like photos, the colours are less saturated than Honors, but in a good way, and the ability to shoot high bitrate codecs is a great tool for any video maker or content creator who wants the ability to colour correct properly in the editing phase and get the most out of the footage. Now in the end, if nothing else, this comparison shows how far Honor has come. It goes head to head with iPhone in a number of ways, to the point where it's really hard to separate them in terms of things like performance and display. The one area I think the iPhone is stronger is in the camera department. Its colour and detail processing is better across the board, at least across the second and third lenses, even if it's not perfect. And the video capabilities make it a stronger tool for content creation. So I think it is the better phone for most people. However, if you're not too bothered about the cameras, you're getting a phone with great performance, display and battery life from Honor, and it costs a lot less than the iPhone. Let me know what you think of these two phones in the comments down below. Has Honor finally made a phone that matches the best from the big names? Let me know in the comments or you can get me on threads. I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap that notification bell. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.